Hello, we want to welcome you into King Stadium on the campus of Huntington University. A little technical difficulties to start the day, but no issues so far for this Foresters attack as they put the pressure on here again early. It's another Igor Barbieri goal for HU today that has them sitting up one to nil. Delush Patel making his first start of the year, nearly picks up his second assist here in the first half. He has been working really hard here today for this Forrester attack. He assisted on Igor Barbieri's second straight game with a goal, 14 last year. He's on a good pace again this year. Once again, we want to apologize for jumping on here a little late today. We're 13 minutes gone in the first half. Foresters taking on the Siena Heights Saints, coming in, playing their first match of the year. Uh, they're coached by Drew Crawford, a very storied career at Siena Heights, and 10 years as a professional as well. But right now, the Foresters have a lot of answers against this Saints team as they switch up the starting 11 today. And so far, it's worked nicely for Coach Russ Lawson's side. Sienna Heights come in today. We'll run through their starters really quick. We did not get a pronunciation guide from the school, so we'll work hard to uh, get all these names right for you listeners back in uh, Sienna Heights territory as well as Patel tries sending another through ball for the Forest. There's nothing there. That's Marcelo Lopez getting the start in goal. Nolan Chapit wearing number three today for Sienna Heights. Geiske Zandio out there as well. It's Marcelo Roca. Carlos Musales, Pedro Arthur, Aiden Bruce, Jorge Ellis, Diego Baitelli, Josh Vernier, and Gustavo Lira for Siena Heights this afternoon. We'll try to keep up on that as much as possible. The roster also not updated on their website. We did get it before the match today, and we'll try to keep that uh, information up to date for you as well. This is Bernardo Cuelo through the middle for the Foresters. He's looking down the right side to Lylan. Nothing happening yet. Patel will bring it back over to Cooper Foshi. Foshi playing 180 minutes in these first two matches, and that's the first foul of the day. That one's going to go on Zandio, and the Foresters a chance to put another early ball into the box. Foresters coming off a 1-1 draw in their last game against St. Xavier. It was Barbieri who scored in that match, and he's already got one here today, just 15 minutes into this one. Foresters also coming off their first night game in school history. Patel to the right side, Foshi on the edge of the box, rips one in, it's knocked away, and a good job stepping up and pulling that one away was Marcelo Lopez. As the Foresters continue to push the attack here in the first 15 minutes. Edgelson. Lodiero out there as well for Siena Heights. As mentioned, uh, roster issues here today, so trying to keep up with those and update them as fast as possible. Siena Heights in their away blue, Foresters in their home white kits. Sam Delobapu working in the middle, and the Foresters have it knocked away, and they'll play it quickly. Foresters are coming off a game that Coach Russ Lawson believes they're really committed to putting the ball through the middle of the park and that allowed them to switch the point of attack and have a real abundance of opportunities on the offensive end. And so far, that same plan working out nicely here today as the Foresters pick up their first foul of the day. As mentioned, the Saints coach by Drew Crawford, his fifth season with the program. He's an SHU grad. He's second all-time in Siena Heights points. He scored 166 points in his career for Siena Heights. Scored 70 goals and 29 assists. A two-time first-team All-American. So the right man in charge here for the Saints. Someone to really learn from. So when sent towards the middle, dangerous attack. Pellegrin steps up. He's knocked down but able to collect. As trying to get on the end of that was Roca. He couldn't do so, but a good chance for the Saints here, trying to even this one up early. Foresters do make a couple changes to their starting lineup today. We've already seen an assist from Patel. He's making his first start of the year and his first appearance on the year as well. And he's replacing Colton Foster, the Huntington native, who is uh, going to be working as a sub this afternoon. Heights 
trying to play it up the middle here. That one's easily sent back to Pellegrin. Yet to be tested, but has come up with some really large saves for this side already on the young season. Just two matches in, a couple of 1v1 stops, and that's really why Huntington's been able to at least get a point after uh, both of their matches on the young season. Jackson Terry with his second start works up the left side now. He's gonna send a long ball to Barbieri again. Barbieri able to chase it down with a nice touch. Two goals already for him on the season, looking for another. Patel takes a long shot. This one's lifted too high. No challenge there for Lopez. And already the third shot of the day for the Foresters. No updates on uh, Sienna Heights record from last year, but in 2021, five, seven, and two. Trying to have a strong campaign in their first match against uh, the Foresters here today. Still a feeler for Coach Crawford to see who his best 11 will be on the year. A lot of foreign influence for this side as well, much like the Foresters. Drenth unable to get a touch on it. Now a little bit of a dangerous situation here for Foshi as he's ripped down and Roca picks up the foul there. Drenth holding off Roca who is trying to make a run towards goal. Drenth, the freshman, making his third start in all three games. He works with Klefecker and Foshi on the back line. Both those guys playing all 90 minutes in the first two matches. Delesh Patel through the middle with Quelo. Back to Patel, little two-man game. Patel, good footwork, gives off to Dolo Bapu, up ahead to Barbieri, and he just misses a great save there by Lopez. As Barbieri was looking for an early brace, that would have been three goals in his last two matches but Lopez able to stretch out and knock it away off the post. The Lesh Patel really bringing the energy right now for this Forrester side, a junior out of Bolton, UK. And he's been the real playmaker here early. He'll be the one on the corner for the Foresters here. 20 minutes gone, 1-0 HU. Patel sent him one into the box. Another good ball, but headed away. It looked by Gaiska Zandio there, knocking that one away. Sienna Heights trying to counter, long ball ahead. Foshi able to keep it in control, but back on it is Batelli. This one's ripped away, and now Lyland's got the ball for the Foresters. He's got an early assist in the first two games. It's been really promising for HU on the right wing as well. Drenth working with Camera, who's getting another start on the left wing today. Works with Patel back to Camera. Andre really good with the ball at his feet. Rips it in towards the 18 yard box. Tries to find Dolo Bapu, but it's ripped away by the Saints. Patel again, and he's ripped down, and that's gonna be a free kick in a dangerous spot for the Foresters here, as Patel continues to create for the Foresters. Big collision there, about 25 yards from goal. Patel slow to get up and it looks like he'll be able to do so. No action in the first two games, but right now he's kind of the go-to man for the home Huntington Foresters in this match. Sam Delobapu will stand over this one. He's got several options in the box. Dolo Bapu rips one on goal and he buries it. It's Dolo Bapu's second on the year and he is dreaming right now to start his collegiate career. Absolute stunning goal from Sam Dolo Bapu. Three games for the freshman, two goals, one assist on absolute fire in his freshman season. Dolo Bapu able to rip that one to the left side. Lopez, no chance to stop that one. It'll be our first water break of the day. And right now, someone needs to pour some water on top of Sam Dolo Bapu because he is feeling it in these first three matches for HU.
We'll see if we can get a replay there on that free kick here in just a few moments. Really, that's what Russell Austin talked about when I spoke with him this week. These freshmen that are so impactful for the Foresters already in their young collegiate career. You've got Dolo Bapu and Terry and uh, you know several others throughout the team that have just stepped in and have taken the collegiate level um, really by storm and Dolo Bapu the one doing the most work so far for HU. So we'll wait for this break. The temperature is still remaining fairly high here in the northern Indiana area, about 85 today, a slight breeze, not as hot as our Wednesday night game that the Foresters played. It was real feel around 100 that night, but still trying to make sure everyone's hydrated and the players are safe out on the pitch. And so we'll have a quick resumption here in a moment. Take a look at this free kick by Sam Dolo Bapu just 25 yards out, pure strength, and it just wraps right around the pole inside that left side, and Lopez unable to get a hand on it. And it's a dream start for the Foresters here as their offense continues to click in these first three matches. Oceana Heights will look for some answers here as they find themselves in a hole early in this match. Foresters continuing to try to put the pressure on. Ball sent out wide, but running out of room there was Pedro Arthur. Nothing really clicking right now for the Saints as they try to crawl back into this one. Drenth still playing kind of a defensive midfield area. He sends a good ball up here to Lyland. He nearly gets a touch on it, but Lopez steps up and pulls it away. Sienna Heights trying to do the same thing. Cooper Foshi heads it out. He's right in the middle of everything for the Saints right now is Diego Baitelli. Sienna Heights playing through their midfield down the right side. Nice touch there by Coelho to take it away. He gives it up to Patel. The Foresters have numbers here if they can execute. Dolo Bapu off the goal to Barbieri. He knocks down the defender, but the Forester is able to collect right around midfield. That was actually Camera pushing up with the midfield. Coelho just gave it off here to Kleefecker, who hands it off to Foshi. Foshi and Drenth working through the midfield as they have in these first three games. Marcelo Roca working against the freshman Drenth. He's pushed down, and that's going to be the first foul today. Drenth did have a yellow card in the last match. He won't see one here, but it is another aggressive play by the freshman. Right inside the midfield circle here for Siena Heights to try to create something off a set piece. The Museles over top of this one. Long break here, and now he'll send it towards the box. Nothing happening there for Sienna Heights as Pellegrin rips it down easily. And now the Foresters will try to counter once again. Talk about a really solid duo in the back. Kleefecker and Foshi have really given little ground to opposing teams in these first three home matches for HU. And already today being pretty stern on the back line. Cuelo out wide to Dolo Bapu. He'll try to put one in right footed and Lopez will come up and collect it as Dolo Bapu is looking for some more points to his total through these first three games. As I mentioned, the two goals and one assist for the freshman his first three matches. Sends one up to Barbieri again. He's able to hold off the defender for a moment, but then Sienna Heights recovers, and they send it back to Lopez, their goalkeeper. Ball sent through the middle. Not a whole lot of possession right now for the Saints. As the opposing 
Fans try to encourage their team to get back into this match. Dolobapi with a good touch in the middle, and he's able to use his strength and get it back, but it's going to be a foul as Hedgelson Godiero was there to hold off Dolobapu just enough to get the possession back for the Saints. Another ball through the middle of the park here for the Saints. They'll work it back into the midfield and out wide. The Forester is able to step in and get it with Lyland. Lyland to Drinth. Now back to Lyland down the right side. And he's knocked out of play, and that's an aggressive step in there by Nolan Chaput, who knocks down Lyland, and that'll be yet again another foul on the Saints. This one may be the most aggressive of them all. You check out the replay here. It was Chaput just coming in and knocking Lyland right off his run. Maybe a little frustration setting in early for the Saints as the Foresters have really controlled this match here early. Jackson Terry stands over this one. A couple of Sienna Heights defender trying to create a wall. Sent towards the middle, headed away for a moment, and then knocked out for another corner as the Foresters will have a chance to serve another ball into the box. Looks like we'll have our first round of substitutions as well for the Foresters. Colton Foster coming in, a Huntington native along with Jao Ratinho and Pedro Borges stepping in. So a couple more playmakers. We've seen Ratinho come off the bench in all three matches this year. He's already got six shots and four on goal. Kind of a consistent playmaker off the bench. And the same could be said for Colton Foster. He played 76 minutes in his last match and had two shots in that game. Dalesh Patel will send this one into the box, trying to get ahead on it is the Foresters. It'll fall all the way back to Jackson Terry. Terry uses that left boot to swing it in. Dangerous ball, headed away. And Chaput will step up and knock it away towards his teammates in the middle of the pitch. Vitelli now looking for options. He sends it up to Vernier. Vernier can't control. Drinth tries to let it roll out, but it'll be a Sienna Heights throw in. Ball sent towards the middle. It looks like a dangerous throw in here. He's trying to run it down was Museles, and he's knocked down, but it's a foul on Sienna Heights, and the Foresters will have a free kick in their own box. Coach Russ Lawson really challenged this team to come out and play a full 90 minutes of concentrated soccer here today. He wanted to keep his lines more connected, wanted to see all 11 working back on defense, and I think. That play right there shows you how hard they're working here today in their third home match looking for their first win. Two draws to start the year, both one to one. And the Foresters really would like to get in the win column and start building towards conference play once that one comes. And it's another foul and it looks like it's gonna be the first yellow of the day. As Sienna Heights already a handful of fouls and that will be the first yellow. And it looks like receiving that card was Aiden Bruce. Another aggressive tackle in on the Foresters. Seventeen oh seven left. A Barbieri goal along with Sam Delobapu has the Foresters sitting somewhat comfortably here in this first half, a 2-0 lead. They'd love to add on maybe a few more and just coast to their first victory of the year. Foshi works through the middle with Colton Foster just into the game. Another freshman, Jackson Terry, working as well on the left side. Terry into Borges, who's freshly into the game. Good turn in the middle of the park. Up to Patel, now back to Borges, and able to knock that one away. Another solid defensive play by Guillermo Dimasio. At least five subs coming in now for Sienna Heights. Two for the Foresters, as they'll make some changes as well. Looks like Shane Renshaw will be making his first appearance on the year. And Nathan Lemon steps in as well. We saw him for about 13 minutes in the last match. So we're seeing some 
different players getting some time here today for the Foresters as they try to come away with their first win. Ratinho tries to work against the defender and it's knocked out off of Siena Heights for another Forrester throw in. Ratinho in the box working hard here and it's knocked out again. It looks like that'll be a goal kick. Another nice job by Damasio just shepherding that one out for a goal kick for his side. Jorge Ellis in for the first time today, along with several other Siena Heights player. Looks like Connor for Carlo also in for Siena Heights. Drinth through the middle to Patel, already working on an assist. Good cut back to the center of the pitch and then knocked away. Stepping up and getting the loose ball is Terry. Pretty crucial intervention there by the freshman. Foshi ahead to Ratinho. Ratinho and Patel working through the middle. Delesh Patel knocked down again, and that's the second time he's created a free kick for his side. It was Guillermo Ramos knocking him down, and once again, the Forester is really piling up the fouls right now against Siena Heights and creating a lot of dangerous spots just outside of the 18-yard box. The first dangerous spot they had the ball for a set piece, it was a stunning goal from Sam Dolobapu. Let's see what Jackson Terry has in store. He rips one and it's way too high. Lopez watches it fly over. But maybe worth a try there from Terry as he might not get a whole lot of chances for shots on goal this year. So why not take a shot when you get one? He'll leave the game. Manuel Diaz will come in for the Foresters along with Alex Owanowski played in 19 games last year, started seven, just 13 minutes in his last match, but starting to work his way into the rotation for the Foresters. Coven Drenth steps up. He's able to get the second touch as well and now works it towards the middle of the pitch. He finds Colton Foster who moves it over to Diaz, his first touch of the match. And it's back to Foster in the middle. Borges and Olenowski working together. That one's off Alex Olenowski and Siena Heights will collect a throw in. Saints just cannot get it past the back, back line of the Foresters right now as another step in by Foster creates another chance for the Foresters. Nathan Lemon, his first touch. Playing on the right wing here today. Also saw Shane Rinshaw getting in on the action as well. 13 minutes left in the first half as Pellegrin knocks this one out. Brendan Robbins throwing this one in. He's a new player as well in for Siena Heights. He appeared in two games two years ago as a freshman. So trying to become more of a staple for this Saints team. Saints able to get this one into the box. Pellegrin able to pick it up. He's yet to really be challenged in this match. Kovan Drenth gives one away and this might be the best chance yet for the Saints. Try to work it through the right side and Foster steps up with a big interception there. And now he works it to Borges. Patel will take it through the middle. Tries to put one forward to Ratinho and a nice step in and able to get that one out of bounds with his right foot was Damasio. Ratinho, good turn in the box, but once again, same defender collecting a lot of these big challenges as Guillerme Damasio and forces this one off Ratinho for a goal kick. Another new player checking in here for Siena Heights, Kai Ribes, as he'll get his first touch here. He's pressured by Rinshaw and he knocks it out. It'll be a Forrester throw in deep in Siena Heights territory. Ratinho, the playmaker off the bench, trying to do a little extra there. Lemon rips one, it's knocked up into the air. Borges doesn't get ahead on him, 
on it, but the Foresters get it for a moment and then it's recollected by the Saints. Big step there by Onofsky. He creates another chance here for Borges, who continues to run on through the contact. It's knocked out for a throw in. Manuel Diaz will take it and the Foresters will try to reset the pitch here and work it from side to side as we've seen them do so often here in these first few matches. Drenth kind of intercepting an old pass there heading towards Borges. However, the Foresters regain the ball. Olenowski on the left side working against his defender. Drops it back to Drenth. Drenth through the middle of the pitch over to Borges. Borges looking for options. He'll head it back to Lemon and then Drenth through the middle. It is Foshi taking a break right now. His first break on the entire season. Drenth and Patel working as they tried looking for Rinshaw. Nothing there for the Foresters. Borges sends one up ahead to Retinho. He's able to turn. He rips it, and it's another goal for the Foresters. As mentioned, Jao Retinho, the real star offensive player off the bench and he just perfectly places this one past Lopez. And the great start is still rolling right now for the Foresters. Now a 3-0 lead with just over nine minutes and 45 seconds left in this first half. Talk about a real weapon off the bench. Ratinho coming off a year, he played 20 goals, started 11. He had 13 goals and two assists. And Right now he's coming off the bench for this side and he's had plenty of chances in the first two games. He finally collects his first goal on the young season. Forrester's attack looks like a well-oiled machine right now with Retinho, Barbieri, and Dolo Bapiu collecting only early goals in this match. Retinho with another good touch and he's able to hold on just for a moment and that's going to be another foul on Siena Heights as Damasio a little too aggressive there against Jao Retinho. It's been the consistent players for the Foresters right now collecting some goals, but also some new players on this young year stepping in and making a big difference. You cannot say enough right now about Delush Patel. He's really been in the middle of everything that the Foresters have going. Uh, attack wise and he's kind of opened up the pitch for this team to uh, start collecting goals at an early rate here in this first half. You see Alex Owenowski who's had a bigger part of uh, the pitch here today. He's coming off a season where he played 19 games, started seven. He had a goal and four assists. That's just another option that once these players continue to work into the system a little better, learn their new teammates, this team becomes a lot more dangerous, and we've seen that on full display today. Another ball sent in the box by the Foresters. Sienna Heights able to get it out of the box for a moment, but Diaz picks it up around midfield. They'll work it down the left side. Looking for Retinho was Borges, but couldn't collect his teammate there, and it's knocked out for a Sienna Heights throw in. Lorenzo Lemon as well for Siena Heights, his first action of the day. Retinho, good touch on the ball here, able to keep control. He'll work with Borges through the middle. This one's sent out wide, looking for Rinshaw, nothing there. Damasio has it now. Pressure put on by the Foresters, and Patel rips it away. Delesh Patel loses it. It's a low shot by Borges. He collects it back. It's actually Owenowski who is in there, and the shot is deflected right back to him, but then a handball on Alex Olenowski, so it'll be a free kick for Sienna Heights. Forrester's got an early start just over six minutes into this match, it was Igor Barbieri scoring in his second straight game. Big touch there by Lemon as he was able to show off some footwork, but does lose possession there shortly after. 
Pressure put on here by Borges. Lopez will have to lift it out towards midfield. Renshaw heads it back towards the Forrester attack. Patel, just a little too much of a jersey, picks up a foul. Sienna Heights wants to work quick. They do have options up ahead. That's Ramos trying to run it down, and it's knocked off Ramos by Kleefecker as he once again plays real solid defense on this back line. Want to mention on that goal from Retinho is Pedro Borges getting his first assist of the year. So a couple of super subs here today for the Foresters making a real impact. Rinshaw and Drinth working on the back line with Lemon and <laughs> that's teammate on teammate crime there as Drinth gets hit by that one. Sometimes uh, spacing just a little too tight for the Foresters and Drinth getting the worst of that one. Back in action here. Borges able to poke that one away. Patel knocked down and he's been really creative picking up fouls against the Saints here today. He gets another one there. Seven shots, four on goal for the Foresters. Four corners and just five fouls on the Foresters in this first half. If you look at the Saints, no shots uh, and obviously none on goal as well. One save from their goalkeeper on the other side in Lopez. They have committed 11 fouls with one yellow card. So a physical brand of soccer going on today by the Saints and the Foresters really just playing through it and showing their toughness here in this first half. Diaz steps in, pokes it away, tries going up ahead to Rinshaw. Rinshaw trying to use his speed on the outside and he knocks down the Siena Heights defender, Kai Uribes. And there's some aggressive play back from the Foresters, maybe a little too aggressive. And Siena Heights will get the ball back. Lopez has to step up as he gets a pass back from Victor Salman. Salman sends this one ahead. Sienna Heights has someone up ahead, but once again, the Forester is able to track back, and that's another step in and a foul, and now a little talking going on between Pellegrin. And that was Guillermo Ramos stepping up, and it did look like he clipped Pellegrin on the way by, but I wouldn't assume there'll be a card for either side here. Not a big foul by any means, but definitely goalkeepers protected. And Pellegrin a little upset with uh, Ramos clashing into him inside the box. See Pellegrin kind of letting the referee know what he thinks about the situation. Either way, we'll just play on. No yellow card given, and I think that's the right decision from the referee. Lemon works it ahead up to Patel. Patel's got Ratinho on the right side. He tries to lift one through. Ratinho able to get on it for a moment and then knocked away again by Salman. And back through the middle to Damasio, who sends it up ahead. On the end of it, Sal Marchanda. And he's ripped away there by Kleefecker, and that's going to be a foul on Kleefecker there. Win for Siena Heights as Marchanda gets on the end of this one. He cuts back, he rips it. It's deflected away by a Forrester defender. However, Siena Heights able to get on the end of it. Saints maybe trying to get a little momentum back here if they can put one in before the end of the half. Siena Heights working hard here against the stout defense of the Foresters. This ball sent through the middle and another foul called on HU. So this will be a good spot for a free kick and maybe a good opportunity for the Saints offense to put one in. 2.45 remaining in this first half. The Victor Salman who stands over this one.
Saints looking for an answer. Ball sent into the box, but the referee's gonna stop it before it can occur. Feels like the pace of play has been a little slower from uh, this referee today compared to the other referees that we've seen throughout the season, really slowing the game down uh, during free kicks and other stoppages. We'll see if that is the same story in the second half. Ball sent into the box, knocked away by the Foresters defender. And it looked like it could have been a high kick there from the Saints, but instead it goes out for a throw in. It was Ellis trying to step in and get a shot on goal. He's got it now working on the right side. Excuse me, left side as he works it ahead. But once again, the Foresters knocking it out. 90 seconds remaining in the first half. 3-0 Foresters. Damasio working on the back line. He's had a solid game, stepping up Owenowski. He's headed back the other way, works it through the middle with Retinho, uses the left foot, can't find an option, but gets it back, and somehow comes up with the ball. This one's ahead for Patel, but knocked away. Now Renshaw will run on the end of it, uses his head into the box, able to keep it, and a foul called on the Foresters. And that is not a ton of contact there for that foul as really Rinshaw did a nice job just using his body and he's gonna pick up a yellow card. So Rinshaw picking up one of the lighter yellow cards you'll see on the year. But however, it's the first of the day for the Foresters. So now both sides with the yellow card. Ball back in play for Siena Heights. 40 seconds remain in this first half. Salim forward, knocking it away was Lemon for the Foresters. Picking up the loose ball is Robbins. He tries to send it ahead and Siena Heights able to keep it in down the left side and that'll be out of play. And 20 seconds now remaining in this first half. Looks like the Foresters might be content with just taking the 3-0 lead into the half as this one's knocked straight out of play. And what a dream start for Coach Russ Lawson's team. It was three different goal scorers in that first half. You start with Barbieri, who's your best goal, goal, goal scorer, excuse me, from last season. And then you see, you know, the freshman Sam Dolobapu getting one. And then of course, Jao Ratinho with the third. So we'll take a short break here on FDN Sports. We'll come back in just a few moments, give you some updated stats as the Foresters look to collect their first win on the young season. We'll be right back on FDN Sports for some more soccer between Siena Heights and the Huntington Foresters.
We're making a movie! And action. I'm the script supervisor. I'm first AC for camera A. Second AD. Best boy electric. Focus puller. I'm about to run this right here and man the camera. Be speed. Thank you, bye-bye. We've got over 20, 25 students that have worked really hard all semester preparing for this month-long experience. Oh yeah, the standards have definitely been raised. You ready for me or no? Normally we do films in three days. We do a lot of student films. <laughs> and this has been like four weeks plus an entire semester of prep. This is just insanely different. The respect that I have for anybody doing group work on a feature film is through the roof. On set this week, we have Stephen Baldwin. Let's leave him to do the miracles and me to handle the business. On the technical side, it was better than anything I've ever experienced before. Kudos to Huntington University. I'm afraid our conversation ends right here. We also have casted Bethany Lind. She's on a Ozarks and a DC series right now. You just left, you didn't call, I thought you were dead. I think this is a, an amazingly immersive experience. I wish I had had something like this. Pros come in and they've come in from all over the country, our department heads. The first two weeks of mentorship, I mean, it's a lot of teaching. Let's see if I can catch any more. It's fun to see where the students are now. We're on week four, day 17, we're getting there now. I think it's good to walk away. I think everybody on this project is in, in a li little bit over our heads. But the prerequisite for being used by God is self-doubt. And we are all being used by God. All of us are here and gifted with different things by God. And all of those pieces are going to fit together and make a really incredible movie. I think that I'm like m way more capable of, of like hard labor than I thought I was. <laughs> I think I've definitely become more confident in myself and the process of being able to figure stuff out when there's a problem. Making movies is hard, but it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's meaningful because it's bigger than you. I definitely think God is teaching me patience. I have learned how to take things with stride. We want the way that we make movies to reflect our Christian faith. That's almost more important to me that our students are seeing that. That's convenient, thank you. I hope that they can take something of what we're doing and live out their faith no matter what movie set they're on. Folks, that is a wrap. We just made our movie. I'm Megan Hosteller. I'm the producer of the In the Beginning, Our Purpose event. And currently we are getting ready for Britt Nicole to come in and just have an intimate worship night with here at HU with all of our students. Um, we're currently getting ready for the camera team to come in, um, as well as the lighting and everything like that. Our whole team has just put in a lot of effort and time into this event, and we're just really excited to see how it pays off. One of the big goals for this project is from our community, we want to bring people into this worship night to come and have a really great experience to be impacted. We want people to come in and worship God and ultimately the goal is about finding our purpose. A lot of people are trying to figure out, hey, what's my purpose? Where am I supposed to be going? What am I supposed to be doing? The next five, 10 years, there's gonna be a lot of change happening. So what am I supposed to be doing? So the goal of the event is to help people find that purpose uh, through worshiping God, through asking the Holy Spirit to grant us wisdom in these moments, grant us wisdom this night as we sing praises to you, as we receive um, wisdom from you, as we receive your truth tonight, and ultimately come together in a corporate community to praise you together. I, when I saw the name of this, actually the first time I saw it, I think was like on Instagram, and I was like, wow, this is so cool. In the beginning, our purpose, like this is truly why we were designed and created was to worship God, you know, and so um, I love the name of it. I love that 
you know, they had a, a heart and a vision to bring this to their school. And honestly, I've just been so excited, like leading up this whole month, just my spirit has felt really excited and stirred for what God is gonna do tonight. What's cool about it is it doesn't feel like it's about like one particular person. It just feels like, even the way it's set up, it just feels like this is about everyone and just coming together to, for one purpose.
Welcome back to King Stadium. It was a dream start for the Foresters in the first half. Three goals for the Foresters. Maybe one of the best all year long that you'll see. Jao Ratinho tucking one on the left lower side of the goal right past Marcelo Lopez. It was also Igor Barbieri getting in on the scoring again. And of course the freshman Sam Dolobapu. Foresters just two draws on the early season. All three games at home, they played their first ever night game in school history, their last time out looking for their first win of the season. 45 minutes to go for Siena Heights to get back into the match. They did not have any shots in that first half. They struggled to really get anything going past the back line of Klefecker and Foshi for the Foresters. But really just the game dominated by the Foresters in that first half in all aspects of the game. Bernardo Coelho works through the middle. He'll work it ahead to Barbieri. He plays it right back to Coelho. Those two work well together through the midfield. Barbieri already two goals on the young season in his first three games. Nearly had a third. It took a great save by Lopez to keep him out of the net again. Boshi backtracks, knocks it towards the new goalkeeper for the first Foresters, making his first appearance of the year as Luis Costa out of Portugal, another Portuguese for this Forester side. So Pellegrin gets his first break of the season, and Costa has the job of keeping the clean sheet for HU here in this second half. Good touch here by Patel, lifts it to himself and nearly comes down with it, but instead it's Siena Heiss. Carlos Musele says steps in and pulls it away. Boshi up to Drinth. He's knocked off his dribble for a moment and then he knocks down Marcelo Roca. And Roca will be the one that looks like setting up a set piece for the Saints. I want to apologize to Owen Leland's family. I call him Leland in the first half. I heard that from the press box ahead of the game. I knew it was Leland. Call him that the first two games, so my apologies. We'll get back to calling Owen by the right name here as Sienna Heights has a chance and they connect off a set piece as Brendan Robbins steps in and taps it in past Costa. And that is exactly what Sienna Heights was looking for a perfect set piece. Three touches leading to the first goal of the day for the Saints. Good delivery there off the head of it. Looks like Geiska Zandio, who is picking up an, uh, his first assist of the match. And Robin's able to just put that one right past the diving Costa. And all of a sudden, a 3-1 match here as the Foresters kind of find themselves in a similar spot. Uh, that they did in their last match, kind of came out and obviously only a one goal advantage then. Luckily for them, they collected three in the first half, but a quick attack back by Sienna Heights off of a well-drawn up set piece for the Saints. Patel continues to work hard for the Foresters here in the middle of the pitch. Sienna Heights already keeping a little better possession than they did in that first half and really playing much better soccer as Camera picks up a foul there, knocking over Lorenzo Lim. Musoles will sit this one down and hopefully for the Saints collect another really solid set piece. Musoles making sure the ball is looking normal and he'll take a look at some teammates in the box and see if he can draw his team a little closer. Musole serves it into the box. This one's sent pretty deep. Costa steps up and able to catch that one calmly. As once again trying to get on the end of that one was Josh Bernier. Camera and Terry working on the left wing as they have well in these first two and a half matches of the year. Quelo getting some pressure, working with Terry, and Sienna Heights steps up and pulls it away again. This one's now ahead, another chance for the Saints, but Terry is able to come back and collect it. Looking for a penalty there was Marcelo Roca, and that might have been a little bit of a dive at the top of the box. 
You can see a referee give a card out for that if someone's trying to flop or dive a little too extra. Rocco went down pretty easily there in the edge of the box and don't think you're gonna get rewarded for a penalty for that one. Patel once again in the middle. It's Quelo who picks it up for the Foresters. He'll try heading back the other way. Leland making a run down the right side. Leland's gonna get on the end of it. He's got some options at the top of the box. Delobapu making a run. Leland has to backtrack. Sends it up top and loses possession and now a chance for Sienna Heights to counter. The ball's knocked out, it'll be a throw in for the Saints. Roca loses possession, it goes back to Klefecker. Foshi back in there. We did see Foshi kind of get his foot stepped on in that first half, so you wonder if that was kind of the reason for the rest there at the end of the first half. But back in there now is him and Klefecker continue to roam on the back line. Foshi has it now, sends it over to Drenth in the middle. Foresters continue having to play the ball backwards to try to recollect. Roca intercepts, tries to play it ahead, but Puelo's there. Dolobapu's been a playmaker, sends it up ahead to Camera. Camera gets on the end of it. He's got Barbi Barbieri in the middle. Dolobapu joins the attack. Sam's got it now. Fake shot here into the box and he's ripped down and it's gonna be a penalty kick for the Foresters. Dolo Bapu used the fake shot here with the right foot to get the defender a little off guard and then just reaching a little too much there was Zandio knocking Dolo Bapu off his run. And Dolo Bapu continues to be the playmaker and Barbieri's gonna get a chance for his second goal of the afternoon at the penalty spot. Barbieri, one of the best finishers in all of the Crossroads League. Already one goal today. Igor steps up and puts it home. Number two on the match, number three on the year, and the Foresters' best goal scorer is on a heater right now. Barbieri continues to collect goals in his Forrester career. 14 on the year last year, already three in his first three matches. And he's the go-to guy right now for HU as they get that goal right back that they allowed in the early stages of the second half. Foresters, four goals. They only had one in their first two matches each. And today they've had no issues finding net as Patel sends one up to Barbieri again. He can't get to it. And it's going to be played off to the left side as Sienna Heights tries to regain possession. Foshi having to work hard. It's knocked back by the Saints, but stepping back in is Quelo to pull it away. Dilobapu finds it again in the middle. Barbieri to Dolobapu out to Camera. Camera sends a long ball over to Leland. Dangerous on the right side as we've seen in these first three matches. Sends it back to Foshi. Foshi working with Patel. Patel getting pushed off his run and that's another foul. And once again, the Saints getting a little chippy on the back line. Patel has now created four free kicks today for the Foresters, picking up fouls on the Saints defenders. As that was Chaput again getting a little aggressive with a Forester attack, we've seen it a couple times on that right side of the defense. Jackson Terry will whip this one in the box with the left foot. Delobapu was nearly on the end of it, but a little too a little too aggressive there at the end, and it'll be a free kick for Sienna Heights. Damasio working with Lopez on the back line. They also work alongside Bieri. He sends it forward. Jackson Terry able to get ahead on it, but it's another throw in for the Saints. Hey, 
Santa Heights got the early goal, a good answer in this second half, but the Foresters respond right back with Barbieri's second of the match. So Barbieri looking for a hat trick with one more here today. See if he's able to collect one more. And right now the Foresters sitting pretty well right now with 37 seven minutes remaining in the first half. Santa Heights tries to work it into the box and it's another foul here on the Saints. So it'll be a free kick for the Foresters. Luis Costa making his first appearance as a Forester this year. He is a sophomore for this side. Working as the backup goalkeeper this season. Delobapu sends a good ball up ahead to Foshi. He joins the attack off the back line. Tries skipping that one into Leland. And some miscommunication there between Lopez and Damasio gives Huntington an easy corner. It looked like Lopez easily could have collected that one, but Damasio stepped in and sent it out of bounds. So the Foresters have another chance to put one into the middle. Owen Leland having a nice start to his Forrester career. Transfer from Indiana Tech has an assist already on the early season, looking for number two from a set piece. Leland with the left foot, puts it in the middle. No Forrester there to collect right away. And headed twice into the row by Vernier. Roca steps up, Patel able to just put him off his run enough for the Foresters to recollect back to Terry. Foshi was over on the left side. He now makes his way back to the right as Drenth collects it in the middle. Patel and Camera work two-man game here on the left side. Barbieri shows in the middle. Had a turn for a moment, but works it back to Camera, who goes to Drenth. Barbieri shows off the footwork again, able to use his strength to hold possession for a moment, but then loses possession. And Sienna Heights will work through the middle. Lopez will get a ball sent back to him. Barbieri applies pressure, sent out to Damasio on the left side. Damasio finds Roca, who works all the way back from the top of that attack. He's gonna send it up to Robbins, who already has a goal. It's knocked away just for a moment, but Sienna Heights able to recollect. Vitelli. Sends it ahead to Roca. Now Robbins looking for a long shot this time. This will easily be collected by Costa, his first save of the day. And Robbins was looking for a brace as he's already got one here in this second half. He's been a bright spot today for these Saints. Delobapu works against three defenders, able to put it by all of them, and now works down the left side. Delabapu still on the ball. Barbieri tried to make a run towards goal, but Sam puts it a little too far behind and the Saints dodge a bullet. Camera steps up, knocks it away for a moment, now tries to get it back. But Vernier steps in and pushes it back to Lopez. Damasio, dangerous ball. Patel in against the goalkeeper. He's knocked down and Damasio not collecting a foul there as Patel remains down in the box. And the clock's gonna be stopped here as the referee's gonna go have a look at Patel. Once again, another one of those situations that maybe in the normal field that might be called a foul, but in that penalty area, it's gotta really be pretty aggressive to point to the spot and maybe just not enough there on Patel as the Foresters were claiming for their second penalty of the day. And yeah, not really enough there from Damasio to lead to another penalty kick as Patel maybe trying to add a little acting to his repertoire as well here today, but nothing to show for it. Still four to one with 33 minutes remaining. Saints send one towards the box. Costa does step up and then does collect as Terry holds off Robbins. We 
East Coast out working with Garrett Kleefecker here who goes to camera and will recollect it from Andre. Tries to send a long ball forward. Barbieri trying to get on the end of it. Lopez has to step out and knock it away with his feet this time. Patel goes to the middle of the pitch and collects it just enough to get it back to Foshi. And that's going to be a Siena Heights throw in. Siena Heights has definitely been a lot more dangerous here in the second half. Of course, the one goal coming in this second half, but also just a lot more opportunities around the goal scoring area has led to a little extra stress for the Foresters. Robbins runs onto it just outside the right side. It's deflected and Costa able to pick it up as Robbins was looking in the middle there for Roca. Drenth working on that back line as a midfielder as well. Continues to provide an outlet for his right back here today, Foshi. Jackson Terry on the left side as he sees Kleefecker play it up to Andre Camara. Camara all the way back to Terry. De Lobapi now in the middle over to Drenth. Foshi an outlet on the right side. Sent forward and deflected there by the Saints. Nearly falls to Barbieri. Instead, Damasio gets it and plays it back to Drenth for the Foresters. Coelho through the middle with Drenth. Drenth tries playing it ahead to Leland. It's headed out for a Forrester throw in. The Lobapi who has options here in the middle as he takes some open space and turns towards goal. Sends it up to Ego Barbieri and stepped in and a good defensive play there by the Saints says. Igor Barbieri was trying to get in for his third goal of the match. Looks like that was Maurice Barreri stepping in and hitting it out for a Forrester corner. Jackson Terry, the freshman, will be the one sending this one into the box. Dolo Bapu, the obvious target for the Foresters in the middle. It's sent his way a little long. Kleefecker tried to shoulder it down to an option, no one there. And it'll be Patel who has to send it back out to Quelo. Quelo sends a long ball to the right side to Terry and it'll fly out of play. So it'll just be a throw in for Siena Heights. Forsters with their best offensive game of the year. Four goals already with still half an hour left. Sienna Heights trying not to go away quietly here as a shot's ripped into the middle, but Kleefecker steps in as that was once again Roca stepping up and hitting a shot on goal, but stepping in the way was Kleefecker to avoid a second chance for the Saints. Saints continue to work through the middle. Another long shot and nearly another goal as Andio was looking for a goal to add to his assist on the game. Looks like Costa was beat on that right side, but just a little too wide for the Saints as they tried to cut this lead in half. You can see Roca and Zandio on this replay working together. And a nice cut there by Zandio and it just wraps outside that corner and doesn't find the back of the net for the Saints. So the Forester is still ahead four to one here. As once again, the Saints looking a lot more dangerous here in the second half. Vernier picks it up right around midfield. He'll have to play it back to his back line and try to reset. Ball off to the right side, a little too strong there by Marchanda. And the Foresters will have a throw in, but not before they make some changes. Looks like Colton Foster will be back in with Manuel Diaz and along with Pedro Borges. So Borges have a good start in that first half, was right in the middle of everything. Colton Foster 
Kind of a hard-nosed, just really solid player for this Forrester side. Yas sends it up ahead to Barbieri. Tried to head it on for camera, but ran out of room. Damasio forced to knock it out. Yas will be the one on the throw in here. A couple more Foresters trying to get loose on the inline. Barbieri heads it towards Camera. It's knocked out of the box by the defender, Zandio. Coelho will try to reset the pitch here as he goes to Foster, who sends it over to Foshi on the right side. Foshi intercepted in the middle. Now the Saints have a chance to run. This is Roca who gets on the end of it. Roca working towards goal, hands it off to Vernier. He rips it and it's deflected out for a Saints corner. The Saints attack coming to life here a little bit in the second half, especially over the last few minutes. No shots the entire first half for the Saints. Here in the second half, several shots, a few on goal, unable to collect any goals other than the one from Robbins. They have four shots here in the second half. Vitelli puts this one in the middle. Good headed attempt there for the Saints as it looked like it was Zandio on the end of it. He's asking for a handball, but the Foresters want a counter. Ball sent out wide to Borges and he's gonna run out of room. The Foresters had a chance for a 3v3 there, just unable to connect on that last ball. Couple of changes for both sides again. Jao Ratinho back in as Barbieri will step out with the two goals here today. It'll also be Klefecker who gets a break. Foshi stays in this time, so Russ Lawson giving both of his center backs a little rest here in this match. Nathan Lemon also back into the game. He had. Some impactful plays in that first half as well after 13 minutes in the last match. Jao Ratinho knocks this one out for another throw in. Sam Delobapi wants to keep his midfielders near that midline and see if they can continue to add some pressure. And that's exactly what Foster does here. He gives it off to Delobapi. Ratinho working with camera up the middle. Ratinho already on one goal, sends this one ahead to Leland. He pokes it through, but Lopez able to fall down to his right side and make the save. Another good chance created there by Ratinho as he continues to do that off the bench for Coach Lawson's side. Borges, another one creating chances. Dolo Bapu takes a long shot and added some velocity to that one. Lopez with the outstretched arm makes another save. You cannot say enough about Dolo Bapu, the freshman out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He's 6'3", but also extremely quick. He's got two goals on the young season with an assist and nearly added another one to his early career collection. It took a great save from Marcelo Lopez. Another talented freshman class for Coach Lawson's staff here at Huntington University. This ball sent to the middle. Delo Bapu on the end of it again, and he feels like he's been denied two really good chances on back-to-back -back plays. Continues to create chances for his side, but unable to finish there, and we'll have our second water break of the game. I want to take this time to thank you guys for tuning in to FDN Sports. We'll be covering hopefully as many athletic events as possible this year. I know that volleyball is getting close to moving into the new Platte Arena. Uh, you'll be able to see what that looks like here in just a few weeks, hopefully. Basketball is just around the corner. Both men's and women's looking for strong campaigns. Forrester men's team coming off a year where they made it to the national tournament and then maybe at the end of the school year as well as Coach that frame sits behind us here. We'll get a chance to see what his baseball team has in store for us, and then we'll see if softball's on the schedule as well. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back for the last 24 minutes between Siena Heights and Huntington University on FDN Sports.
four minutes remain between the Siena Heights Saints and the Huntington Foresters. And the <laughs> referees are not even on the field right now as we started without them. And maybe that's how these two sides are feeling. Just 24 minutes left. Want to see if they can control the game on their own. For Siena Heights, they've had double digit fouls in this game. So maybe they feel like they want to go out there and see if they can uh, avoid picking up any more throughout the rest of this match. But we'll have another restart. Still 24 minutes left. Huntington in control and those guys need a water break too. As it's been a warm stretch of days here in Huntington, Indiana. Maybe a little break in the 80 to 90 degree days this upcoming week. Foresters will be back in action at home Wednesday night. Start the year with four straight home matches. And they'll have another chance to play under the lights. Sienna Heights back the other way after the break. Sin up ahead, Foshi steps in, able to send it up to Quelo, who recollects and sends it over to Diaz on the left side. Him and Camera work. Camera looking for options. He'll have to go backwards to Quelo. Foresters have held possession really well throughout this entire match. Foshi up to Camera, able to keep it in. And straight back to Foshi. Costa playing this second half, his first HU appearance, sends it ahead to Borges. He's able to hold off the defender, but stepping up are the Saints and recollecting possession. They'll work through the middle with Zandio. He's got the lone assist today, and he nearly had a goal as well. But he sends that one out to the left side. It'll be a Forrester throw in. It's Lemon on the right side, tossing it in. Quelo picks it up in the middle of the pitch, drops it back to Foshi. Go all the way back to Costa as they continue to reset their formation here. Quelo, good turn in the middle. Him and Costa, a little two-man game here as the Foresters try to drain this last 22 minutes of the match. Foshi, Foster, Costa, Diaz and Coelho all dropping back. Dilobapu, Ratinho, and now you see Camera kind of working through the middle and maybe a little frustration foul here as it was Jorge Ellis coming up and knocking Camera down. Camera asking Ellis to come help him up, but instead he'll get a little jolt from his teammate Foshi. And it's gotta be a little frustrating there from Siena Heights as the Foresters possess it. You just see Ellis step up and knock Canberra down. Foresters just burn about two minutes on that uh, possession, just holding on to the ball in the middle. As this is a handball here by Ellis. I don't think the Foresters want to pump the brakes yet. We have seen Siena Heights create some more chances here in the second half. And I think as many goals as they can collect and get this attack rolling in the right direction as they get closer and closer to conference season. Coach Russell Lawson will be very pleased to see a few more balls in the back of the net before this match is over. Dilobapu tries to roll it on to his left foot, can't do so, but Ratinho picks it up. Camera to Ratinho on the left side, already on one goal today, loses it, but it's knocked out of play as it was Bieri stepping in and knocking it out for another Forrester corner. Foresters with their eighth corner of the day coming up next. It'll be Bernardo Coelho who sends it into the box. All but three Foresters stand in the box here for this set piece. Sent into the middle, headed away by Damasio, and it goes out of play for a Forester throw in. Masio has been in the middle of a lot of these uh, balls sent into the box by the Foresters. He's been a really solid defender here today. Just a couple of really excellent finishes by the Forester attack today. Quelo gets a crucial touch on that one. Back to Foshi. It was Ellis trying to work that one down. Foshi now has it. He's being chased down once again by another attacker. This time it's Vachanda, but this one's sent up ahead and out of play. So a little more pressure here by Siena Heights. They got 20 minutes to get three goals. A tall task for them here today at King Stadium. 
Allison up ahead, Costa able to run it down, slides towards that one and quick outlet out to Diaz on the left side. Foresters with a lot of space down the left side here with Diaz and also Camera. Ratinho gets it in the middle of the pitch and trying to go to the right side, he's got an open uh, Owanowski on the right side now, drops it back to Ratinho, tried to hit it on goal, couldn't get enough on it. It's cleared out, but Foster able to collect it. Dolobapu will work it backwards, that's to Lemon. And it looks like a man down right now for Siena Heights, I believe that's Damasio. Not exactly sure what happened on the play, but it is Guillerme Damasio who's down and has a collection of teammates and also Jao Ratinho checking it out. Looks like he's gonna be able to get up and hopefully finish this match. So a little stoppage here, the Foresters up four to one, 19-15 left in the game. I wanna thank everyone back in the studio today. Also, our camera women doing a great job today as well as continue to try to bring you all the Huntington Forester action for this upcoming school year. Foresters will make a change here as it looks like Robert Nabulare will step in. We saw him in the first match of the game. Uh, he did not play in game two, but Nabulare out of Uganda, the senior forward, getting a chance to come in and hopefully put his fingerprints on this game as well. Nabulare working on the right side, gets it knocked out of play, and it'll be a throw in. I want to thank Robert's dad for tuning in all the way from Uganda in our last match, leaving some comments in the uh, YouTube chat as well as another good chance here for the Foresters from Borges is lifted out of play. It's another save from Lopez. He's had a handful here in the second half. Borges with an assist today was looking for a goal as well. There's been a lot of Foresters collecting some first here on the year with goals and assists. Bernardo Coelho looking for his first assist here off of another corner, now the ninth of the day for HU. Sends it short into the box. Ratinho on the end of it. He's got Coelho out wide again, but instead we'll send it back and Lemon will collect. Lemon's got options in the middle. He instead sends it out wide, but it's too wide for Coelho. And it'll be a throw in for the Saints. The Saints maybe at least can grab some momentum from this match if they can sneak another into the net. Right now the Foresters would love to just shut them down the rest of the match. As it's a foul here on the Foresters. Just a little too late of a challenge, challenge there by Coelho. Nabulare tries to come up for the Foresters. He's unable to collect. The Saints keep possession. Now the work through the middle of the park. Sent to the right side. Foresters step up, but still the Saints on the end of it. They've got another chance here. It's headed backwards. And it was Marchanda trying to get on the end of it. He couldn't do so. The Foresters able to recollect and send it out wide to Nabulare, but he's cut off. Saints now working through the right side. Diaz steps up, he's knocked down. And now the Saints working toward goal. On goal, big save by Costa, but right there at the end to finish it off the shot was Sal Marchanda. So Costa makes a great save, but no one there on the backside for the Foresters. As you see on the replay, Marchanda steps right up, taps it in, and that's the second goal now against Costa, but really neither one he could control. So it was a clean sheet in the first half for HU, but now two goals for Siena Heights, and with just less than 17 minutes left, there's still a lot of game left for the Saints to 
create some more opportunities. After the play, it looks like Diaz is going to pick up a yellow card. That's already his second on the year, so he's got to be careful of collecting those yellow cards before a suspension comes into play. Marchanda had a chance just a few minutes ago. He does finish that one, but now two goals for the Saints, and the Foresters could use a little more insurance here in this match. So Coach Drew Crawford's looking for out of his team. He, of course, knew how to put the ball into the net. The second leading goal scorer in Siena Heights history, now watching his team trying to get back into the game against the Foresters. Ball knocked out of bounds, it'll be another HU throw in. Dolo Bapu for a freshman continues to try to lead his team and communicate with his team through the middle of the pitch and he's done a nice job encouraging his side to stay strong and aggressive, try to add on to their lead. Retinho tries to work away and it's a foul on Siena Heights. And not believing the call is Lorenzo Lim, but the Foresters will have another chance just outside the 18 yard box to send in another ball into the box. Jonathan Ruiz is also in for the first time. He's a freshman out of Claypool, Indiana. So getting his first collegiate experience and it looks like he's the one going to be setting up this piece here for the Foresters. HU's look dangerous from this position all year long. Ruiz sends it in towards the middle. Dulo Bapu tried raising up. It's a long shot from outside the box, but just not enough on it from Borges, and it goes out for a goal kick. Demacio, who was injured earlier in the second half, comes back in. You see this chance here from Borges. Tried one timing this one towards the right side of the goal. Lopez had it covered and watch it go over. Lopez has had a busy day today, trying to keep the Foresters out of the net for the rest of this match. Already four goals he soon go in for HU. Dilobapu intercepts, Ratinho steps up, he just gets a shot up. But stepping in there was Godiro, who keeps the Foresters out of the net once again. Diaz with a good header, good one touch there by Borges. He's knocked off his run for a moment, recollects, but now the Saints back the other way. Saints trying to work their way back into this match. They've been a lot more aggressive here in this second half of the match. Heading back on now the Foresters, they're able to knock it away for a moment. Foster steps up and gets it to Borges. He tries using the back heel, it doesn't work, and now the Saints back in possession. Foresters using a lot of new players here today as they want to get to their best before the Crossroads League season opens up. De Lobapu working through the middle, uses the inside of his foot to send it up towards Ratinho, but it's knocked away again by the Saints. Ratinho trying to push Owenofsky up the pitch. Instead, he stays back a little more. And now Damasio controls it for Siena Heights. Saints choosing to take some space in the middle. Ruiz picks it up off the loose ball, and now the Foresters can counter. Nabulare gets a touch here in the middle. He's got Owenofsky on the left side. Alex works it right at his defender, tries to cut it in, loses it for a moment. Now to Borges, who goes back out to Nabulare. He's in the box. He's got options and sends it a little too high as Ruiz was looking for his first collegiate goal and he's knocking this one out of play for a Saints throw in. So Nabulare had a chance to put one in the center there. Ruiz just not able to get ahead on that one as, as it was a little too tall. And the Foresters had a good chance for number five, just couldn't get it going there. Ruiz steps up, picks this one off and plays it back to Borges. They'll go all the way back to the middle, and the Foresters will try to recollect. Yes, 
Back to Dolo Bapu, and he plays it up ahead, and that'll go out for a goal kick as Borges gave the thumbs up there to Dolo Bapu. He was looking for Borges again on that one, and now Borges will give way again to Patel. Seven minutes, 50 seconds remain in the match. Forrester's looking for win number one on the season. Diaz steps up but loses it again. And now Aiden Bruce gives it up and the Saints are back on the run. But running out of room as Costa comes up and steps that one off. Want to mention Reed Zemanski's also in the game out of West Lafayette, Indiana. He's seeing his first action of the year. He only played a one game last season, but two years ago he did play in nine games. So someone trying to find his way back into the rotation and finds himself getting some minutes here today. Forrester's lineup looks a lot different than it did when we first started the match, but a lot of guys getting different opportunities. Saints trying to keep this one in play, and they can't do that. It'll be a Huntington throw in. Diaz is down on the pitch, grabbing his right knee, so we'll see if that leads to another change for the Foresters. See Diaz still down here. The referee has chosen to stop the clock for these subs, and Diaz will limp off. That'll bring in Jackson Terry. Also looks like Kovan Drenth is coming in as well. <laughs> Another long break in this game as Diaz makes his way off the pitch slowly. Foresters will play again here Wednesday night as mentioned at 7 p.m. The luxury of starting with four straight home games on the new year. They'll be playing Michigan Dearborn. I should add, they will play another game at home as well after that next Saturday against Holy Cross. So five straight matches for the Foresters here at home and then they'll be obviously on the road a little more um, down the, as the season works his way towards uh, September and October. We move towards the fall months. Right now, to start the school year, I, I believe HU back in class uh, starting on Monday, and they get the chance to play a lot of games in front of their home crowd who continue to show up and support them here on the early year. Saints still find themselves down two. They work it up to Robbins, who has the one goal here in the second half, along with a second for Siena Heights on the day. Zemanski steps up, knocks this one down. Reed looking for options, plays it up the head to Owenowski, and Do Dolo Bapu comes up and knocks it out of play. It looks like he did get hit on the foot. The referee gonna let the play go on as Dolo Bapu remains down, and now he'll stop it, but Nabulare thought he was in on goal. Looks like Dolo Bapu just caught a cleat there from Siena Heights. Obviously nothing intentional, but he is struggling to get back to his feet for a while there as Rotino has a chat with the referee as well. So the referee looks like he's gonna have a drop ball here for the Foresters, so the Foresters will be able to repossess. Actually, I think I think the Foresters should send it back to Siena Heights. I thought it was a Forester throw in. Either way, back into play here. Ratinho with a good turn. He's looking for Owenowski down the left side. Ratinho taking a lot of space, too big of a touch, and a big interception by the Saints. Robbins collects here on the right side. Reed Zemanski steps up and pulls it away for a moment and he's knocked down and that's gonna be a Forrester foul. Looks like Zemanski was in a pretty good spot there. However, he picks up a foul and Sienna Heights will have a chance to send another one into the box. 
Manski may be just catching the leg of Robbins there on the second tackle. And Musoles will send this one towards the box. He's been pretty active for this attack. Sends it down the right side. Saints trying to put another one into the box here late in this game. Back to Musoles. He puts it in. Nabular gets ahead on it and Costa able to knock it down to his feet and will pick it up to take a little more time off the clock. Game opening up here a little bit. A lot of space through the middle for both sides. Patel can't get a touch on it, but will be able to try to track this second ball down. Demacio lifts it up. Owanowski heads it to the middle to Dolobapu. Foresters can really turn up the pitch a little bit, but right now they're content with possessing the ball. It's a little over eight minutes remain. Dangerous ball by Dolo Bapu, but stepping up is Lemon, who plays it to Drent. Nabulare loses it, now recollects. Tries to stay on the dribble, but the Saints push it away. And now they'll repossess, heading back towards the Foresters' goal. Roca plays it to the middle. The Saints can't collect there, and Terry pulls it away. Terry plays a long ball ahead, and Rotinho's called offside just a few steps too early. Terry trying to play a really good ball from the back line, but Rotinho caught offside for the second time on the young season. and Gadiero working here on the back line. They'll send it up ahead now through the middle. Museles, who's been involved here a lot recently, gives off to a teammate. Saints gonna try to work through the right side. Leem tackled down by Owanowski, but he pulls it back and now he has a chance to push it ahead. Roca trying to work it ahead, he cuts back. He's got some open space here in the middle. Roca plays it through the middle. Costa steps up. And he's able to collect that one right before Ellis could get a foot on it. And pretty good goalkeeping there by Costa, keeping Sienna Heights off the board. Delabapu continues to control the middle here for the Foresters. He plays it all the way over to Lemon, who works with the freshman Drenth. Drenth plays it for Robert Nabulare, trying to run this one down. He does get ahead on it. He's going to try to play it into the middle, and Ratinho is there with the left foot to sneak it in. Ratinho's second of the day, and he does a little Cristiano Ronaldo celebration afterwards. Nabulare using his speed down the right side, puts a perfect ball to the left foot of Jao Ratinho. And now two Brazilians with two goals here today for the Foresters. Jao Ratinho with a two goal performance. I should say he's from Portugal, excuse me, as that's probably why he's doing the Cristiano Ronaldo celebration, probably a hero for him growing up. And right now he looks to be the hero along with Barbieri for the Foresters. So that's that little extra insurance the Foresters were looking for. Sam Delobapu heads to the bench to take a break. Coming into the game, John Amador, as he makes another appearance here, and the Foresters want to push it back the other way. Alesh Patel still being very active with the ball at his feet here today. Foresters offense on full display in this match. Jonathan Ruiz up to Amador. He's got Owanowski on the left side. Owanowski looks to play one in with his left foot and it's knocked out for the throw in. So the combination of Rotinho and Barbieri combined for 27 goals last year and just today they've combined for four and it's five now for that duo in the last two games. Owanowski taking it to the corner, trying to get a corner kick here for the Forester. <laughs> Holding off Robbins in that far side, and it is knocked out, but it'll be a throw in. Rotinho has had two excellent finishes as well. Barbieri collected one in that 
first half and then had the penalty kick as well in the second. But Rotino's finishes have both been perfectly placed and both of them coming off of one touches. Forrester's trying to keep the ball down on their end and drain this last 430 of the match. Only two combined goals in the first two matches today, an explosion from the attack. And you could kind of see that coming in the last match against St. Xavier that had all kind of chances. And then today, everything has just really come to life for this side. Sienna Heights will try to play it quick here as maybe they try to collect one more goal before they take the trip home back to Michigan here today. The Foresters want to add another though. Nabulare coming off that assist down the right side has it again. He's going to try to take it towards the 18 yard box and work against that defender. Nabulare cuts back. Fake shot towards the middle. He had options but unable to connect. Foresters get another chance here but it's lifted straight to Lopez. Amador was nearly on the end of that one from Nabulare again. He continues to try to provide a spark off the bench and maybe find some more routine playing time if he continues to be a playmaker down the right side. Retinho with the two goals, has it now, plays it out wide to Nabulare. And that right side's really working right now for the Foresters, just three minutes remain. Good talk from Costa to Lemon, letting him know a defender's chasing him down. Amador gets it, passes it over to Jonathan Ruiz. Patel has space in the middle. He's going to rip a long one, and Lopez steps over and easily collects that one with two hands. But what a nice debut on the year from Patel. Owen Drenth lifts this one up in the air. Owenowski's going to take a look at it, but he runs out of space. And the Foresters look like they are two minutes and 30 seconds away from their first win of the year. Coach Russ Lawson, one of the most successful coaches in this program history, not to mention his great playing career as well. Amador on the end of it. He had Nabulare on the outside, but stepping up just in time there was Gustavo Lira. And now Siena Heights will push back the other way, see if they can collect one more. It's a foul on Amador. Damasio back to Lopez. He'll play it out wide and it's too far out of the reach of Leem. Owenowski recollects and it gives off to Terry for the throw in. Right now the Foresters may be doing their best job trying to burn the rest of this clock. Jackson Terry will throw it down to Rotino. He works against Damasio who's able to head it out for another throw in. Ninety seconds left in the match. Terry down to Retinho, working on his two-goal performance. Trying to play against Damasio, a little aggressive defense there, but Damasio once again holds his ground, and Coven Drenth sends it up the pitch and out of play. Siena Heights will fall to 0-1-1 on the year. The Foresters go to 1-0-2. Patel wants another chance here. Rips it in a big save by Lopez. And Patel gets a second chance. And Lopez stops this one with his feet. That second attempt there was actually from Amador. But just unable to collect a goal with the Foresters. And Ruiz knocks down the Saints player here. And now just 30 seconds remain. Still a little excitement left in this last minute of play. Saints looking for their third goal of the afternoon. They send it long to the left side. Nabulare steps in. The Saints do collect it for a moment, but then Nathan Lemon steps in to recollect. Sent to the top of the 18-yard box. Shot on goal, but headed away by the Foresters. 
Foresters will launch this one forward and they will be victorious here today against the Siena Heights Saints. Foresters worked hard in those first two matches to collect 1-1 draws. Today, it's a thumping 5-2 victory over the Saints. And they take care of business today as their attack gets back to work in a really positive way. It's two goals for Igor Barbieri, two more for Zhao Ratinho, and of course the stellar freshman Sam Dolobapu with a free kick wonder from nearly 25 yards out. Forrester's victorious today. We want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in to FDN Sports. want to thank you for all the crew today as well for another great broadcast. And we will be back on the air 7 p.m. Wednesday night as Michigan Dearborn comes into town to take on the Huntington Foresters. We will see you then. For Preston Husband, this has been another production of FDN Sports. We're making a movie! I'm the script supervisor. I'm first AC for camera A. Second AD. Best boy electric. Focus puller. I'm about to run this right here and man the camera. Be speed. Thank you. Bye bye. We've got over 20, 25 students that have worked really hard all semester preparing for this month long experience. Oh yeah, the standards have definitely been raised. You ready for me or no? Normally we do films in three days. But we do a lot of student films. And this has been like four weeks plus an entire semester of prep. This is just insanely different. The respect that I have for anybody doing group work on a feature film is through the roof. On set this week, we have Stephen Baldwin. Let's leave him to do the miracles and me to handle the business. On the technical side, it was better than anything I've ever experienced before. Kudos to Huntington University. I'm afraid our conversation ends right here.